Okay, so the Washington, D.C. City Council, by a, um, what was it, 7 to 3, 7 to 4 vote, whatever it was, 7 to 5 vote, I think, uh, by, by a majority vote, voted that if you are a big store, if you do over a billion dollars a year in business, if you've got over, I think, 40,000 square feet in your store, you have to pay a living, and you want to do business in Washington, D.C., you have to pay $12.50 an hour, a living wage in this city, a, which is arguably not even a living wage, but it's a starting point. 71% of D.C. voters support this. It's called the Large Retailer Accountability Act. 63% are more likely to vote for the mayoral candidate who supports the bill, by the way. This is a new poll that just came out uh, like yesterday from Heart Research, which is not a you know, not one of these like Fox News places or for that matter, MSNBC places. And uh, tomorrow at noon, there's going to be a big rally on the front steps of the Wilson building to support an override of Mayor Graves' veto, Mayor Graves, Mayor Gray's veto of this bill because he vetoed it last, what, Thursday, Friday, whatever, uh, vetoed it last week. And if they can get one more vote, actually two, I think I guess they've got to get two two votes to over to override Vince Gray's veto, then uh, then they will have it. Brian McNich- McNichol is on the line. He's the senior communications director of the Competitive Enterprise Institute, CEI.org. Hi, Brian. Hey, how are you? Good. So Just a couple of things about what you said. Um, mm-hmm. It's one vote. They only need one. It was oh, okay. eight to five the first time. If they can get to nine to four, they would override. Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, so my question, I know that you're, a, you're a supporting Mayor Gray in uh, having overridden this uh, or vetoed this, this vote and that you're opposed to the uh, Large Retail Accountability Act. And what I don't understand is why you don't like democracy. That's well, a genuine question. The majority of people in the city want this. The majority of their elected officials voted for it and passed it. That's called the democratic process. You're opposed to that. Why would you be opposed to the democratic process? Well, the, the mayor vetoed it. He was elected by those people, too. And I guess he will, they will right. all have to stand before the voters and see where, upon, where all this ranks and the, what the voters find important. But isn't, isn't that really the core issue that, you know, communities establish the rules by which business operate, um, whether it's, whether it's buildings, building standards or, you know, the number of parking lots you got to have or, you know, zoning, whatever. Communities get to establish the rules by which business operate. And here's a community, Washington, D.C., saying we don't want to repeat the mistake that Chicago made three years ago when they let Walmart in over the, you know, again, they, the city council of uh, Chicago tried to keep them out. Their Probably mayor a mistake in Chicago. Their mayor vetoed they have that. Stores running there now. They they have done a study. Yeah, there have been several studies now on mm-hmm. what happened after Walmart came into Chicago, and what they found is that it did not create any new jobs. It put out of business a lot of local retailers, and it lowered the average wage. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you could say that, or I haven't seen these studies, so I really I can't speak to them. But uh, uh, so I don't understand the question. Uh, it, Let's see here. I've got I've got one in my hand, and, and uh, eighty two of three hundred and six. After a single Walmart opened in Chicago in September of two thousand six, eighty two of the three hundred and six small businesses in the surrounding neighborhood had gone out of business within t- by March of two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what they found was uh, Walmart store openings kill three local jobs for every two they create by reducing retail employment they, by an how average. They, how do they establish the causality? By reducing by reducing retail employment by an average of two point seven percent in every county they enter, you just count the number of people who are working. Uh, Walmart's entry into a new market does not increase overall retail activity or employment opportunities. A research from Chicago, Chicago shows retail employment did not increase in Walmart zip code and fell significantly in those adjacent. Uh, supermarkets and discount variety stores are the most adversely affected sectors, sucker, suffering sales declines of ten to forty percent after Walmart moves in. Um, there's there's more. I mean, I got you know several pages of this. Mm-hmm. Plus plus every plus Walmart cost the taxpayers um, 245 million dollars just in 2008 uh, by t- paying rent to itself and then deducting that from its taxable income, uh, something that a local business would not be able to do. They'd be you know paying rent to somebody else who would then have to declare that as income. 
And, uh, for instance, in Ohio, Walmart has more associates and associates dependent on Medicaid than any other employer, costing taxpayers an estimated $44 million just in 2009. And, you know, so it, basically we're all, we all subsidize Walmart because they pay 28% below the average for big box stores. And so their, their employees are more likely to be on food stamps and on other aids to, to you know, low-income people. So we're supporting their business model. Why should why should we not why should we I mean what's wrong with saying we don't want to support this kind of a, a predatory uh, 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 what's the word for a bloodsucker um, <clears throat> parasitic uh, business model? <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> what's going to happen on the day Walmart says show up today to apply for the jobs? Well, it's going to be a lot of people, but that would be true if if because if the market anybody had, had them, it is a good wage. It no, is, that's not it true. It's got nothing to do with the marketplace. It's got to do with the fact that our trade policies in this country, since the middle of the Clinton administration, have devastated the 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 the, the, the job market. We you know we lost fifty six thousand factories from two thousand to today. Well, they're talking about adding twenty four hundred jobs at ten dollars an hour, right? Yes. Here in town. More. Yes. And well, they're not they're not ten dollars and twelve dollars. It's between ten dollars and nothing because Walmart's not going to open the stores if the if the if the. But if they had twelve hundred jobs and that causes local employers who aren't as efficient and therefore hire more people to lay off sixteen hundred people, which is basically the the math that I just shared with you from Chicago. Uh, you know, it might look good the first day that they open their doors, but if you look over a two year period, it's a disaster. Why do that? Well, won't um, it, so twenty four hundred people will get jobs. People all over the city will get groceries. That's a big problem in D.C. You're not going to be displacing a lot of groceries because there's not a lot of groceries. Well, what, but see, the free market has taken care of that. Safeway. Um, this is this is how Louise and I get most of our groceries. Uh, they've they've started this thing called Peapod. And you go online on the has Peapod, but right. yeah, yeah so I, you know I understand that. that. But I mean, everybody in the city that I know gets, you know, not everybody, but the low middle income people do not use Peapod, right? Well, there are, there are there are increasingly stores around town, but I, I'm with you. I would like to see policies in New York, in Washington D.C. that encourage the kind of you know corner green grocers that you have in Manhattan. It's just that the the gentrification of New York City has been so intense. Um, since the the boom in the in the lobbying business in this town, I mean, when Reagan came into office, you had three hundred plus registered lobbyists in this town. Now you've got over thirty two thousand, and the starting pay is around one hundred and seventy thousand a year for them. And there's so much money in this town that there, it's just impossible to to because grocery stores run on a fairly low margin. It's impossible to find you know a couple thousand square feet on a street corner where you can open a grocery store that's that's a bad thing and that's again where i think you know the market has failed us and and government should step in and say to developers if you're developing a city block you've got to have room for a grocery store but here's somebody willing to build you six stores if you don't put them at a pass a law that affects one business in town now, you know walmart if they open these stores will not be the only business in town that that makes a lot of profit but doesn't pay its employees very much, right? And there's any number of restaurants, lobbying, people, think tanks. There I said it. <laughs> um, where people, you know, people at the top make more money than the people at the bottom, right? Yeah, but I don't think it, think tanks, unless you're talking about interns, people are paid 10 bucks an hour. Are they? Mm-hmm. I mean, you well, work no, for one. We have our interns. <laughs> Tell me, I don't know. Like 10 bucks an hour. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I said, you know, other than interns. Okay, well, it's an interesting conversation, and and we'll see how our listeners uh, weigh in. Brian McNichol, Senior Communications Director over at the Competitive Enterprise Institute, CEI. Brian, thanks for dropping by today. All righty. Always nice talking to you. We'll be right back. This is the Tom Hartman Program. So 71% of D.C. voters want Walmart to at least pay $12.50 an hour. Shouldn't they? Shouldn't they? 